Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, uh, which is part of Lead Code Weekly Contest 391. Um, this is problem number three, count alternating subarrays. So basically we have um, a binary array number, so only binary numbers, zero and one. Um, and we call a subarray alternating if no two adjacent elements have the same value. So for example, this subarray is not alternating because you have one next to a one. Same thing here, this is not. Same thing here, it's not, right? Um, and the goal is to get the total number of alternating subarrays in the array. Um, and if you look at the examples here, you can see we take single elements. Single elements will always be an alternating subarray because there's only one element, right? So all of them gets taken, but other than that, only this one is alternating because the values are different. The others, the value, you would have at least two values that are equal. So that's the idea, and the length can be up to 10 to the power of 5. So that, again, rules out enumerating um, the subarrays um, uh, like uh, with two for loops, because that would be too expensive. Um, okay, so let's see how we can tackle this. So let's say we have this array, right? Um, if you take a look at w just what you will do manually, right? So first you check this. This one works. Then you'll try to extend it. So here still works. Then you try to extend it more to this here. But the problem, this doesn't work because we have these two that are the same. Okay, so what do we do when two are the same? Well, obviously we should try starting from this position we shouldn't try starting from this position because if you do we know that they are equal that's why this one failed right and so it makes sense more to start from the last one and so to start from here so this is valid um, and of course we would have uh, checked this one also valid so this one is valid and then we try to extend we can't extend right because if we extend this doesn't work and so we start from where we ended, which is here. This is valid. And then we try to extend. This is valid now. One zero is valid. And then we extend more. One zero one is valid. Okay. And of course, we need to calculate this one. We need to calculate one zero as well. And we need to calculate zero itself. Okay. So the first one, basically, what are the observations we can make from what we did manually? So the observations we can make are first... Um, when we have a failure, which basically means, um, which basically means that an element is equal to the previous one at position i minus one. Let's say this is our array a. Then in this case, we should our start, the start of our subarray should move to be equal to i. Okay, right. That's exactly what we did. Um, remember, when this failed, we we started from this instead of instead of starting from here, oh, and when this failed, we started from here instead of starting from zero, right? And so that's the the first observation. The second observation is, if you take a look at what I did, like like for example if you take a look just let me just delete this so that this is clear but if you take a look at we, we did just for the last segment here what did we do well for this one when we were considering it we needed this one we needed to count this one and we needed to count this one what is common between these well they all end with this position okay and how many we have we have three which is the length of this subarray and that you could try it with every position, all the subarrays, the number of subarrays that end at that position is the length of from uh, the length of the subarray ending at that position is starting from whatever position we need to start, which is this here. Okay. So our second observation is that we need each time to add to the count the length, which is basically the end minus the start plus one. Now, end in this specific case is i, um, but if it depends on how we loop. If we loop for i in the range of n, then this we can use n, or we can name it end for it to be more clear. 
And with these two observations, that's all you need to solve the problem, right? We can just traverse the array, and every time we encounter equal values, we can, anytime we encounter equal values, we can just uh, put start at the new position, right? Not i minus 1, but i. Uh, because if we put it at i minus 1, then i minus 1 and i are equal. So that subarray is not valid. So we put it at i. Um, and then each time that we have a valid subarray where there isn't any equal values, we add the length because the number of arrays that end at this at end here or at i is going to be the length from end to start. Okay. And with those two observations, we should be able to solve it. So let's jump on the code and um, make sure it works. Um, okay, so let's see how we can uh, code this up. Well, first, we just need to do our loop, which we said you could either name it i or end. Um, and this can be range from 1 to n. Because why starting from 1? Because what we can do is, so first we need the length of the array. Let's call the array a, just to simplify things. Um, Let's start count with basically just counting one. Basically, this would be a zero. Just counting the array a zero because we start end from um, from this uh, from one. So um, start start at zero, and so start will need to start at zero. Right. So we have start equal to zero. And I'm doing one here so that we can compare end with end minus one, right? And so we just take into account the, the array with only the first element. Um, and now we can check if this is equal. That means we can't have any subarray with end and end minus one elements. And so we have to move start all the way to end. And then we said that count need to be, we need to add the entire length of the array because that's the number of subarray ending at uh, each element and so this is going to be end minus start plus one and we can return count so pretty simple um, now if I run it like this submit it does pass in terms of time complexity it's over time um, mm, okay, just some variables no really extra space so of one space uh, so over in time of one space um, and the key insight here is when we counter equal, let's move our start to the element, the last element, because f because of that end and end minus one positions, that entire subarray, n those two elements can't be in any valid subarray, and so we just have to move over from them, right? Um, so that's the core idea, and then the second one is just this calculation, and that this is something that occurs often where. To calculate the number of subarrays, you can just consider the end of the subarray. Okay, and because you know the end is going to be the last element alone, the last element in the previous one, the last element in the one previous, uh, before that, the last element all the way until the starting position, and that's just the number of elements that you have in the subarray. And so that's the other insight here. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this problem. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one. Bye.